Emma. Hey, Hello, I'm back, Kendra. What happened earlier, girl? You was here. Well, well I got three or four phones because I have business phones. And what happened was I was trying to flip the fold phone open and it hung up on you. Oh, okay. Let me turn the lights on. Let me. So I was trying to hit you on Instagram, but let me come in here real quick. Hey, that's cool. You still got, you about to go to bed with your makeup on? No, um, I'm still, when I came, I came from a meeting and then I been on different phones in meetings and okay, just having it slow. Got you. You must be a boss lady. What's your name, honey? Vernette. Vernette, where are you calling me from? Atlanta. ATL, how old are you? I am 59. 59, you look good. 59. About oh, to be God. 60, girl. You got to be 60. When's your birthday? December 16th. That's a Sagittarius. Sagittarius, right? yeah. Okay, Sagittarius. What you do for a living? I am a real estate investor. I'm an real investor. estate investor. investor. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Burnett, Atlanta, 59, Sagittarius. Um, real estate investor. Do you have any children? My kids are grown, 40 and 25. Oh, was you ever married? Mm hmm. You was married. When did you get divorced? I wasn't never divorced. Widower. You're married right now? No, I'm not. He passed away years ago. Oh, okay. I was like, this is a riddle. Your husband <laughs> passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was a while ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. This is Burnett. When's your birthday, Zodi? Oh, you told me. This is Burnett, Atlanta, 59, Sagittarius, real estate investor, two children, 40 and 25. Let's get into it, boo. Um, let me put children. I got my iPad today and I have my notepad. What kind of man are you looking for, honey? He has to be, I'm retired from my regular job, so he has to be between 55 and 62. Somebody real grown, you know, retire-ish. 55 Somebody, and 62? Yeah. Okay. Likes to travel. Likes to travel. And stable, stable and in stable. their mind, and you know, just stable. You got to be stable when you're about to be sixty. Okay. Does he have to be in Atlanta? Nope. No. Um, no, it's not to be in Atlanta. You don't. I'm assuming you don't care if he has children. No. Mm -mm. Okay. I, Does he have to look a certain way? Well, I'm five nine, so I don't want nobody four eleven, four two, four three. They got to be at least six foot tall. Ooh, they got to be at least six foot tall. Does he got to make a certain amount of money? Um, Kendra, you know, that's a really good question. And I, and maybe you can help me with this because when you, when I tried to date down, it didn't go well. Um, what is dating down? Um, once I think you've been established and you've, you know, retired from your job and you're stable um, and your finances and, and you have a few, you know, some real estate and you, you know, can do whatever you want to do. It's harder to meet someone that is not stable in their finances and their thinking and have their own home because then you start getting into that build a bear man type of syndrome with them. And I'm just, no, you gotta, you gotta come complete and whole. Okay, so here's my take on it. I know women. Okay, so let me just put like this the example. Let's mm -hmm. say you were a man and you made whatever money you had. Mm -hmm. um, most men who are financially stable don't care about a woman's money because they are going to be the providers, right? So they just want someone to fit into their life. Money's right. not an issue. I'm going to take care of that. What happens when the woman's on the opposite end? she desires the guy that either makes what she makes or makes more than what she makes. But the question always becomes, does that guy want to date you? And a lot of times, not saying it doesn't happen because there are success stories of what we like to call power couples. But then mm -hmm. I have, I know friends and I like to use celebrities because celebrities are just people that we know. Mm -hmm. Let's just use Candy from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Like she's right. a multimillionaire. Her husband doesn't make what she makes. And I remember if you guys watch the Housewives, before she got married, her mom was giving her so much hell because she mm -hmm. felt like her husband was trying to use her and he wasn't on her level. And then Candy said, I dated all the men that made more than me on my level. None of them wanted to settle down. None of them I could build a family with. 
So right. I say that to say, um, I think companionship is the most important, right? I think if, you know, if, if you have the money, and the thing is this too, because I, I always say talk to wives, talk to husbands. I love talking to those people because mm -hmm. relationships go, they, it's a journey, right? You mm -hmm. know, if you started married, if, if you've been with someone since they were 20, there might've been a time when he was up, but then there might be a time when he's down and you got to pick it up. Right? right. So there's never really this longevity of someone's always up. It's a give and take. You could be on the bus one day, the next day you're on Rolls Royce, but it's that journey you go through in the relationship. So I understand because you are right. When you date a man that makes less money than you, there's challenges in that realm too. But I think companionship. I think companionship, substance, things. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not saying, I, I'm saying this. I'm not saying women should trick off on men. That's not really mm -hmm. my, my um, saying, right? But I look at it like this. If you desire companionship and you're a woman that's well off and you're willing to spend $3,000 on a pair of shoes, then what's the big thing if you were to spend, I don't know, $500 on somebody you want to hang out and spend your time with? You know, like, you really got to answer that question for yourself. And I right. just think that when you're in a certain tax bracket, it becomes challenging. But don't get don't get in the Russell Wilson Sierra fantasy worlds. They're the <laughs> they're the they're the Cinderella story that we would all we've all been sold the Cinderella story. And that's another problem too. We grew mm -hmm. up knowing about Cinderella, thinking that shit was real. And <laughs> it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> it does. You know? It does. And I, I think the problem for me is that um even though um, I, you know, I'm successful in business, I'm not really a person that when I'm out and I live in Atlanta, I'm out for business and I'm not really like, I don't go to clubs and stuff like that. Um, but I think that um, it, it took me a while to really know who I was as a person, kind of late bloomer. And then once I retired and my kids were grown, um, I've been single since like 17, 2017, but, um, and I'm active at my church and stuff like that, but I, I meet people, but they're not, they're either coming out of divorce. Cause you meet people that's in, you know, in my age bracket that they, maybe they were married for a while and maybe their, you know, spouse passed away, or maybe they just came out of a divorce and so I think it's just the timing sometimes. Um, and then I know that I'm not going to like leave Atlanta and relocate to somewhere else because I'm originally from Seattle. So I'm not going to move from Atlanta. So that, you know, but I think the biggest thing for me is that, um, yeah, I, when I get married, I'm going to marry for love. But when I say I don't want to, and I say date down, I want someone that is at least stable and but stable, why are you calling stable. dating down? But listen, but real quick, why mm -hmm. is it dating down if he makes less money than you? Because isn't it like, I mean, because we have this conversation on my show all the time. I hear like you're mm -hmm. saying dating down because the the quality that you're considering dating down is if he's not on your financial level. No, but I don't. See, when I say dating down, I don't mean finances. Like, okay, so what do you mean? Okay, so explain to me what you mean when you say dating down. Um, okay, like for example, um, you know, and this is just a really quick example. I met someone you know, they, you know, didn't own their own home and this, that, and the other. But then I found like that I was giving more into that, that, that situation than what they did. And then when I looked up, when I looked like a couple months in it to it, when I was trying to get to know the person, the person always wanted to come to my house and they didn't have any furniture at their house and all this kind of stuff. And so when I'm say dating down, I'm not always per se talking about um finances i mean that maybe because they went through some stuff i would have to maybe you know pick them up a little bit to get them and what's dust wrong them with off. that and what's wrong with that men do that it, every day it with does, women it ends up costing me money okay i mean here's the deal i think <laughs> men do what you just said every day women are looking for a man to bring them up right so isn't that what life is about what women don't gotta start realizing is the kind of guy that's going to stick by you and be by you is a man that you're going to help out in some way. That goes a lot longer than, than having a nice ass. Like if a guy lost his job yeah. and you was able to be there for him and help him get another job and encourage him during that difficult time in life. Like I think, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think if you're in a position and you can help out 
some way, somehow, that's, those are the things that, those are the things that men be like, okay, she's more than just a pretty face, right? Or she's more than just a big ass. Or, you know, I think the, really the superpower women have, they don't, they, they disregard it. And I think a superpower okay. is being there for a person who needs you. Now, right. am I saying pick a bum up off the street and let a move into your home? Hell no. Nah. But life happens to <laughs> men too. And men need to know that when life happens, you're going to be there to encourage me. You're going to be there to be with me. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of women nowadays just focus on the attributes of the non-substantial. His house. He said he didn't own his home. I, I don't know how much you make, but you know there's not a lot of people not even just black men there right? isn't Kendra. it isn't it is so okay so now with that being said do you want just nothing then because that's no the well, I mean, to settle with i've been nothing. i've been taking it listen it's you know just trying to get some really good advice about it and to be perfectly honest it's scary for me because it's just that it's not that I don't really want to work. Like, for example, if I had to be totally honest, I mean, I want somebody that I, I moved back to the South because I wanted a country man, somebody that can cut the grass. Like, I want to plant some greens and some tomatoes in my yard way back here. And it's like, you know, you what I'm saying is that now that I've gotten older and I'm about to be 60, I had to reevaluate, you know, you know, like you said, reevaluate your thinking about what I, I think about to you know when you die and like if you get older are they gonna put you in a home and i be think there's a lot of things as you get to be 59 and 60 you start your your mind just clicks because it makes you realize okay i want a life partner but then i want somebody that can go take trips with me or somebody that is you know has a passport or somebody whatever i tried to do it that other way and it didn't work for me i don't know why it just didn't so at the end of the day, it's like, and I've gotten like a few people, you know, to give me great advice. And they're like, no, you don't have to lower your standard, but you have to just be aware of what type of people, if you're able to, if you're going to date someone that is maybe not as financially secure, what are they bringing to the table? Well, like, let, me what, just what give, let me just give some data of factual information from my show, because that's what okay. I can speak on from a factual situation and i sit in a seat where a lot of times there's a lot of things i don't just say because i feel like it will it will not come across as nice but let me right. tell y'all some statistics right so um i get a lot of women requesting you know i do highlights a lot of times when i do highlights the videos of the women who are older do not get that many views and mm -hmm. when they do get views it's because they're saying something that people are judging right um, I get a lot of women, in particular, request, requesting me to do a 55 and older senior night. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that because there'll be way more women than men. And I might have 500 women <laughs> to maybe, let's just say 500, let's just say 20 guys. And out of those 20 guys, let's say 10 of them want younger. Yeah. So now I got 500 women. <laughs> who want the same 10 guys. Yeah. And that's and that's some truth for your ass. <laughs> like, I'm just telling y'all the facts. Like, and I think what's happening is y'all not realizing the numbers game. Like, a lot of times, this ain't even about lowering your standards. It's like, girl, it's, are they available? Like, y'all keep talking about standards. The reality is how many of these men are available and then mm -hmm. how many of those women want that guy so that means yeah. now this guy has 500. And I want I want to be clear. Mm -hmm. I am being kind when I say 500 because it's probably more than 500. The men that come yeah. on my show that are considered to be quality get at least mm -hmm. 2,000 DMs. So now this guy has 2,000 DMs to, to, to ruffle through. So if you got 2,000 options, you're going to get, you're going to design what you want, right? So, right. And, I, and again, that doesn't mean I'm telling you to settle. That's not really what I'm trying to preach either. I'm just guess I'm just trying to wake y'all up to yeah. what is out there. Yeah, and you have to be realistic. Like, you know, um, you know, I know right now I need somebody. I mean, I really, to me, to be honest, I want somebody that is, you know, 
they like to garden. You know what I'm saying? I'm corny now that I've gotten older. It's like, I want somebody that like, if you want to go listen to jazz and wine tasting and you know what I'm saying? That corny stuff. But at the end of the day, it's like, you don't find you either. If you have one, a man with some money, you gotta, you gotta, cause I had, I was with one that I pretty much had one that have had money. But the problem is when you get into that, then they, don't have a whole bunch of time to spend with you. So you have to come between a happy medium. You're going to be like, what is it that you really, really, really need? Okay, so I had to change that and say, I want somebody that, you know, can hang out with me in the backyard and we plant some flowers and we go do this and we go do that. And really the dates that I want to go on are not even expensive dates because I really don't like restaurants. I like to be at home cooking with my man. I don't like going out all the time. I like chilling in the back. I like listening to music and just kind of chilling out. You know, if we do go somewhere, we go into a concert or something like that. But when you meet the ones that are, you know, 55 to my age bracket, they either have just came out of, and then I mean a lot of 55 year olds that got two month olds. They just haven't, they haven't, they have grown kids and they're done, but then they're meeting younger women and they're starting all over again and they're making babies. So, you know, yeah, that's the kind of, deal, especially in Atlanta, you know, so it's like, yeah, it's kind of like, like you said, it's kind of like throwing the dice and, you know, <laughs> you know, and, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, you got to decide for yourself what's important. I remember, I don't know her name, but I had a woman on the show and she was like, she wanted somebody to marry her. Oh, there's another thing I want to say. And women, just like men care about image and how yeah. a guy looks because I get guys that are single, have no kids, but they're not the kind of guy a woman is checking for. Right. And I'm not right. saying you should be checking for him, but you're not the kind of guy you're checking for. Just like men want somebody attractive. Women want somebody attractive too. Like attraction is on both accords. Attraction matters on both accords because when the guy is attractive, the women give him more attention, just like men do. So let's start there. And, um, but listen to me, I don't have all the answers, right? So I'm not going to pretend I have all the answers. All I can do is share the data, you know, with it. And I think there's a lot of women who make a lot of money and there's not enough guys to go around to every woman that makes that amount of money. Right. Right. And the thing, and the thing about it is, is that, you know, as you get older, it's like, I think my life is more simplified now that I'm retired from my regular job and I have my own businesses, but I, I have, I have a little bit more, I have a lot more time to put into a relationship because I work from home, you know, but it's just, you know, how do you meet those people? It's like, it's like, it's, you guys don't even know. It is hard out here for a pimp. It is hard. <laughs> I, well, let's keep going. You know. I know we're having a long conversation. So you want somebody to come in the backyards with you. What's some yeah. deal breakers with, for you, Vernetta? Um, men that are just not truthful about who they are and what they are. I, and, and, and so that you understand, looks don't matter to me. I'm looking at a person that I connect with that looks don't matter to me. I'm just telling you, I mean, they don't. How they, When I say how they look, I'm not really looking at the physical appearance as much as I'm looking at the, the, their, their heart and the inside, you know? Okay. That's more important. Okay. Um, does he have to be in Atlanta? No. Okay. He can be no. any um does he have to you don't care about kids um let's get to make well we already talked about money so let's pass that let's do the kendra cam let me see how do i sit it down can i sit it down can i sit it down let me put, put it right there can you see or is it too much light i'm trying to get this light i'm in the living room where i'm not big i'm super little <laughs> Can you see now? We can see you. You look good. Yeah, I'm you'll be out. sixty. You'll be sixty this year. December sixteenth, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So, Vanetta, when was your last relationship? Two thousand seventeen. Two thousand seventeen. Okay, you don't have to answer. But when was the last time you was intimate with someone? Two thousand and seventeen. <laughs> also, you haven't had sex in five years. Mm mm. Ooh. Is that because you're just waiting for a relationship? It's that and my relationship with God. And I made, I did it the other way. I, I did it the other way. And I just, and I'm, during, you know, before the pandemic, I decided that I was going to try it a different way. So you're not having sex until you get married again? 
Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, oh, okay. girl, these girls, they the little jingling don't work, girl. They on Viagra. It don't be working. And then I don't wait at all that time and I get five minutes of fun. Mm -mm. So wait, so how, but you're not going to know if it's working or not till after you marry him. Well, I mean, when you be 60 years old, girl, it's companionship. Because every guy too? Every guy at 60 ain't wiggling. So the, the guy too? The guys, I mean, I girl, let me check. Ooh, child, girl. Mm -mm. So you go to church, right? Yeah, I do. And y'all do know church men are men. Yeah, I know. Okay. I, I, remember, think, I mean, I, I mean, they're they're I, um they're now it, divorced, but Megan Good and Devon Franklin. I remember when they got married, a lot of church women were upset that he chose Megan Good because you know Devon Franklin is and I mean they're divorced now, and I, I hate that right. they're divorced. But they got married. And I remember when they got married, church women were very offended and upset because they felt like hey, he, she's not even a church girl. And, you know, they were expecting, I'm like, he a man. He a man. man. Yeah. Because and I whether was he in church or not, he going to marry attraction and things of that nature. Just be clear. Yeah, Ask the girl. And let me tell you, when I got it, the wiggle skills, mm -mm. he wasn't so, wiggle. Okay. So let me ask you this. Do you talk to the men in your church? The church, I used to go to a huge church. I don't want to mention, though. I used to go to a really That's big man. And then um, I left there, and I went. I go to a smaller church where there's not a lot of men at the church that I go to now. But the church I used to go to, there was thousands of them. But most of them were, a lot of them, not, I want to say, like, maybe 50-50 were married. It was a really, it was a really couple, it was a lot of couples in that church. Church, I no, used it's to... interesting. Okay, because I was gonna share a story for a woman. I think I forget how low she was. I forget her name. So many mm -hmm. guests. Um, but you're not the you're not the first. You're probably like this is probably a trend because I'm getting a lot of women, fifty plus, that are saying what you're saying that they're not gonna have sex again until they get married. So normally I'm just gonna be honest with you. When I post mm -hmm. this video, let's say I post you as a highlight, you probably will be a highlight. The comments in the past say that those women are delusional to feel that somebody's going to marry you at your age without having sex first. And I'm not God, so I can't confirm that delusion or not. But you are probably the fourth woman on my show that is over the age of 50 that has made that request. Mm -hmm. So, again, I'm not God. I can't confirm it. I'm just going to tell you what the comments are going to say. I want to give you real talk. So let's say you don't find a guy to honor that. Are you fine with that? Is it um, like like will you be okay with not getting married if if I, that if that rule can't um if, the, if we can't find anybody I, to agree to that? A lot of men that a lot of men the, the problem is is that they they can you can have sex with them but they lack intimacy they don't have, they don't you can I mean what I'm saying is that they don't have no romance I mean what I'm saying is that you can make you can connect with a person. Like, just can you can you imagine how powerful it is for you to meet somebody, Kendra, and you guys like make a you know wait like a month or two before you have sex and you've gotten to know him and sex is not on the table, and then when you guys finally make that um, commitment to be together, then I mean you know, and I and I get this all the time, but at the end of the day, if you could got to know them and you took sex off the table and then you had sex with them and it didn't work out then you done gave your body to this guy and then you guys ain't even together. And so what I'm saying is that I need somebody that has a really strong mind, someone that has intellectual, they're intell you know, they're smart. I'm attracted to smart men, men that are go-getters, entrepreneurs. So the, like, yeah, I love sex, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to be sleeping with you and there ain't no commitment and there's not, you know, when you talk no, to No, listen, listen, listen. I, I understand everything you're saying. I asked you a clear question though. I said, if you cannot find a man that can honor that, are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, that's all that matters. Because mm -hmm. if, if, if you're okay with the rule and if you can't follow anybody to honor the rule and that still works for you, that's what matters most, right? Because not saying it's again. I don't. I'm not God, so I don't pretend to be anything. I don't know. I, I, I believe. I believe anything can happen. Like I really do. Um, yeah. But I just want to share with you what they gonna say because that's what they gonna say when your when your video is posted. But I will say you gotta think of the statistics too, and just the numbers game of the men in church 
and things of that nature. And then talk to Mary. And I always tell people to talk to people that are married and who are in relationships. Well, you've been married, so you already know. <laughs> you got married early, though, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, got you. Someone yeah. said, I'm 58, and I'm not giving it up, period, before marriage. OK, you got another one. A woman in the comments. Let me get her name. Um, her name was Glendon, Glen, Glendon Johnson. I'm 58 and I'm not giving up, period, before marriage. Okay, Gwen. You better go. It's your body. It's your body. It's your decision. Um, yeah. All right. So why would a guy be lucky to be with you? Um, I know who I am. I'm very, I'm very stable and I'm very, you know, um, I'm a, I'm a hold you down. Like I'm the type of person I'm either an all or nothing. I'm a hold you down. I'm a, you know, we gonna roll until the wheels fall off. You know what I'm saying? And I need somebody that has longevity and they, and they and they actually know what they want, you know? And I know that I know what I want. I mean, man, 59, 60, you ought to know what you want and you, you gotta be stable. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've ired out the kinks of my life. And even though I move in business, I have, I have, orchestrated my life so if i was to meet the right person i'd be perfect now because i have so much time to put in that relationship versus when i was working corporate i didn't have time for no relationship okay okay fair enough let's do it boo this is renetta let me get your statistics together renetta atlanta does the guy gotta be in atlanta i can't remember no he doesn't have to be in atlanta <laughs> all right so that means you're willing to travel i travel all the time okay <laughs> She's a Sagittarius, a real estate investor, two grown children, 40 and 25. She was married before her husband passed away. She'll date 55 to 62. Why well, I forgot he has to be six feet too. Well, I'm five, I'm five ten. So Okay. So he has to be six feet and willing not to have sex with you until marriage. And have and be financially pretty much stable like you too, right? Oh, and just so you know, he doesn't, I don't care about how much he makes. It's just his finances need to be stable, you know, just finances stable. need to be stable. Okay, that's fair. All right, Vanetta, baby girl, give them your Facebook page. It's Burnett Price. Burnett Price. All right, but well, it was a joy talking to you. You keep me posted how it goes. Give me good tea. You do. You give me good tea. Oh, <laughs> thank and you, I baby. <laughs> Bye, boo. Oh, for the old folks. Shout out to, shout out to my of the my seasoned women i like to call you seasoned i can call you old i'm gonna the call you seasoned and experienced the aarp version oh the <laughs> aarp version there you have it all right bye baby all right <laughs> bye, -bye.